Well, I promised something special for the final, and here it is. What a beauty. In homage to Sanya's reputation as the number one beach resort in China, the Hawaii of the East, the city's finest tailor has created something that few people around here will ever forget. Let's hope the competition has all the color and drama of this ridiculous outfit. 25 competitors set out on the quest to reach the final. Now just 10 remain to do battle for the title of World's Strongest Man 2006. And it's some lineup. Don Pope from the USA is back. Poland's Jarek Dimek from England, Terry Hollands. Another pole, Sebastian Venter. Mark Felix of Grenada. The third pole in the final, Slavek Tojcik. And Ravis Vidzis from Latvia. Estonia's strongest man, Tamo Mit. Phil Fister from the USA. And the current champion and favorite, Marius Pujanowski. Oh, come on, you didn't expect me to wear it all day, did you? Now, I've made the short journey from the hotel to here, the Yalong Bay Central Square. The athletes are warming up over there. They've had three days rest and recuperation, and they are itching to get going. First up for them is a classic strongman event. And boy, oh boy, is it brutal. Indeed it is. It's the deadlift. Two cars, you've just got to lift them off the ground as many times as you can. Seven men have tried. Jarek Dimek leads the field so far with 13. Vidzis and Fister just behind him in 12. And next up from Dartford in Kent, Terry Hollands, who had one disallowed in the heat due to some rather picky refereeing. He uh, certainly won't be uh, hoping for a repeat of that. Yep. And lift! So off we go. Terry with that uh, distinctive grip of his working these cars. Good lift. Lift. Good lift. Wait for it. 10 kilos heavier than it was in the heats. 330 kilos now. Well over 700 pounds. And Hollands can't make that mistake of dropping the bar like he did in the heats. Good lift. He's asking how many is that? Well, it was eight. There's another one. Now, can he get to 13? It's all about seconds, the grip, your quad lift. muscles, and the lower back, and keeping lift. some sort of momentum. Lift. He's got to 11. Lift. Now, the next one's important. There's a couple of guys on 12 that he can join here. So he needs to find another one. This is a big one. The legs are buckling and wobbling, and he get it. And he's held on, so he gets to 12. That's an important one. He knows that he put everything into that last one. But he's not going to get 13, but he won't be unhappy with that. No, I think he'll be absolutely thrilled. He did 11 in the heat, and it was 10 kilos lighter. So now 22 pounds heavier, Terry Hollands manages to grind out 12. What a fighter. Here's the defending champion. The man who's owned this event in recent years. Is he going to be a four-time World's Strongest Man? Well, Take your position. he got 17 of these lift. in the heats. He goes for the Terry Good Holland's lift. grip as well. Lift. Good lift. What's lift. the advantage of this grip? Good lift. Well, it lift. makes you feel like the bar's closer. Good it lift. drags up your thighs lift. a little bit easier. If you go Good for lift. double overhand, the standard Olympic Good weightlifting lift. technique, lift. then uh, you Good feel lift. like your grip's not quite lift. as good and the bar tends to sit Good further lift. out in front of you. Lift. Really, it's... Uh, a matter of choice and comfort. And uh, obviously for Pudzianowski, it's working well. He's hunting Terry Hollands down easily. Yeah, he's about to join Hollands and that big crowd that are on 12. Now he's joined Dimmock at 13. And this is bad news for everybody in the field. He's rubbing some chalk. He's got 30 seconds left and he wants more. And he's just taken the lead. But he knows Mark Felix is yet to come, and Felix put 17 in in heats just as he did. So he's going to want to put as many in as possible. 10 seconds, is there one more? Can he get it? Yes, he can. One less than in the heats, but as you say, this is 10 kilos heavier now. 16 reps with 330 kilos is got to be some kind of world record. It's truly amazing Pudzianowski can pull that out after the hard effort he put in the heat. Now look at his legs here, never misses a trick. He's got baby oil up the thighs to help slick it up so he can jack the bar up. Such a master technician. 
Mark Felix, the plasterer from uh, Blackburn in England, but originally from Grenada. And he continues to fly under that flag here for the world's strongest man. It's uh, a major right. achievement for Mark to qualify for this final. Left. And this, one of his strongest good events, left. he will need to put left. in a good score. Good left. Left. Good left. He's, he's still left. raw and learning the game. You, you look at a Pudzianowski, he's left. all technique. This fella good is all left. power. And once he starts left. to harness it, you wonder how far good he can left. go. And these two are just complete opposites. The yin and the yang of deadlift. And well, Mark Felix, so raw in his power. I'd like to spend a few months in the gym with him. I'm sure I could improve his technique. His hands so wide, that doesn't help. He bends so much further down than he needs to. Feet far too wide. And he doesn't even wear proper shoes. He's wearing big, bulky trainers. But he's, he's catching, isn't he? Incredible. Well, he's got plenty of time, but is he starting to run out of gas? He gets to 15, one more for a share of top spots. And he's nailed that, but now, can he get sole possession? Everything going into it, but those legs are wobbling and buckling. He didn't get it, he did not get it. Good call from the referee, but he's got tons of time still. Here's another one, oh. Now, just compose yourself, Mark. There's still some time, but no, I think he's settling for that. He gets a share of the spoils, 16. The same as the defending champion, Marius Pushanovsky. That's a terrific start for Mark Felix. It was a tough call by the ref, but the correct call didn't get his hips through in the final rep, but he wanted it. Mark, with 16, you tied even with Marius. Are you happy with that performance? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the performance. Um, I was looking, to, trying to um, do 15 and then take a break so I could go maybe up to 20. But then when I pulled the 16 one, my leg started to shake and it didn't recover. You know, so it's just one of those things. Well, we all expected to see Marius up there, but that is a fantastic effort from Mark Felix, carrying on from where he left off in his heat. Three men all managed 12 reps and Terry Hollands was one of them. He's looking comfortable at this early stage. We're off and running and only Mark Felix has put the mighty Marius under any pressure. Will things change after the break? Power Stairs will decide. Well, two impressive individual performances from Marius and Mark Felix, but this next event is really going to take things up a gear or two. Racing each other in this heat would be test enough, but imagine now going up these steps carrying this weight. Kaz, how is this event going to hit these guys? It's going to be so tough. 23 steps, 500 pounds in the hands, and they're going to go. The grip is going to go. The traps are going to get tired real quick. It's a leg and low back exercise. The whole body's going to be fatigued. They'll be panting maybe 45 seconds. It's going to be one great race. Well, we'll wait and see. Let's see the fireworks. Well, these power stairs are brutal. In 30 seconds, they've got to lift a 507-pound weight and place it on top of each of 23 steps, and they've got to do it faster than their rivals as well. This absolutely destroys an athlete's hands. Let's meet the guys in the first heat. Rivis Vidzis, the little Latvian, 5'11", but a real dynamo. Sebastian Venter, one of four poles in this field, came through qualification very impressively indeed, a former shot putter. Mark Felix, of course, from Blackburn, originally from Grenada. He's off to a flyer here. Talmo Mit of Estonia was uh, going well last year, finished sixth, and will be a dark horse this year as well. And here's another one of the poles, Yarek Dimmick, who uh, overcame flu to qualify in his heat. There's not 39 of them, which is probably just as well, but 23 steps will be a magical mystery tour for these fellas, and here they go. It's the hands you've really got to watch. They've all been really working their hands to get as much chalk on there as possible because that just destroys the skin. Well, to save the steps here, they've put rubber encasing all around this 225 kilo weight, and it's rocking and rolling and causing the hands a lot of discomfort on each and every one of these lifts. And uh, the men, have, some of them take their hands, some of them chalk them. But of course, this is so hard on the lower back as well, but Tarmo flying there. And Mark Felix, what a comeback from him. He moved from fourth to second, no wonder he's celebrating. He blew past Dimmock and Vidzis. It's Venter that'll be disappointed. Coming in fifth out of five there, Mark Felix has surprised everyone with a storming finish to second. Still two guys to go. 
Venter looks like he's going to overhaul Vincis, who's uh, collapsed a little bit here. Yeah, Venter gets in in four. And Vincis, who was going so well, really hit a wall at about 15. And has to settle for that. And look at his hands. Just look at that. That's agony. But Tamo meets 34 1 9. Such a big man, Tamo, using his height well, so explosive. But the others, they look like they're in agony. The hands all cut up, and it's only event two. Tamo, how is that going to affect you and the other competitors moving forward, knowing that their hands are torn to the bone? It's, it's very tough. They have to tape it, and then they lose the grip if the hands are already taped. And it's very hard. You had what seemed to be a good time. Do you think it will hold up against the next heat and Marius? I don't know about Marius. He's very, very fast and very strong, but I hope to beat some other guys. Go, 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 go! Go, go, do it, do it. Well, these are tough men, so you know that they are in serious pain, and that will pass, but how will it affect them the rest of the competition? Slavek Tojcik, only five foot nine, but tons of power. One of the uh, Americans, Don Pope, from Cleveland, Ohio. Former American football background, Terry Hollands from Dartford in Kent. Once a rugby player, a bit like Martin Bayfield. Phil Fister also flying the flag for the USA from uh, Charleston, West Virginia, the fireman. And the man who is looking to defend his title, Budzianowski. He will be favourite in this one. He seems to be favourite in every event that he goes in for. 34.19 is the target for these guys. And Budzianowski's left the rest of them standing, but he actually stumbled there. He's almost going too fast. I don't think Marius Budzianowski has ever been beaten in a power stairs competition. Even a little stumble like that won't stop the great Pudzianowski. He's flying now, he's into his rhythm. The two Americans are battling for second spot. But it's whether Pudzianowski's going to beat 34.19, and he is. He's going to destroy it. So we know who's won, but can one of these Americans edge Tom O'Meat? Don Pope wins that personal duel. Fisters comes in next. Terry Hollands has got to try and edge out Toychek here. This could be an important extra point for the man from Dartford, if he can just get it over that line, yes. and he's just done it. Seconds to go. But no question, who's the winner of this one? Also. Tom O'Meat was right to fear Pujanovski in this event. The pole absolutely smashing the next fastest time. America's Don Pope will be pleased with his third spot after a disappointing showing in the deadlift. Terry Holland's time was only good enough for seventh place. Marius is already in an extremely dominant position, and Mark Felix still looks in good shape, but can he maintain that level in only his first World Finals? After an event not suited to him, Terry Hollands has slipped to sixth. Now we've seen this event before, you all know the score. Four irregular shaped chunks of granite, ranging from 100 kilos to 135 kilos. Lift it above your head, lock your elbows, nice and simple. You'd like to think so. The wind's picked up down here on the beach. That's going to make it tricky. And remember, after the last event, a lot of these guys don't have any skin left on the palms of their hands. Nice. Well, so far, nobody's really got to grips with these stones, Martin. Slavik Tojcik only managed to lift one. Tom Mitt went one better, as did Mark Felix. Rivis Vitsis managed two, but then tried to lift one with his head, which wasn't very clever. Sebastian Venter also got two. Despite getting all four in the heats, Don Pope couldn't do any better. Worst of all was poor old Terry Hollands. No stones lifted and what appears to be a muscle pull as well. Kuchanovsky knows what he has to beat. He has to just lift two faster than anyone else. Ready, to take the lead here. Lift. Let's see what he can do. He'll have watched uh, what's been going on with the others. Good lift. Well, that looked fairly straightforward, didn't it? Now he's going to go after this uh, six-sided stone. Good lift. And there's the two that he needs. Pujanovsky getting into his flow now. And that dodgy second stone that they had in the heats has been dropped. These stones are all heavier now. 
but a lot easier to grip. But as you see, it's the weight that's causing Pudzianowski some problems here. The grip isn't the problem, it's the weight. And that fourth stone, oh, he's in a bit of trouble. He's got the balance, but no, he did not get the full extension there. And the clock keeps ticking, and stone number three is proving problematic for the great man. You know, if this fella's struggling, it really is difficult. Yeah, and he says, you know what? That's it. Finished, OK. Yes, I know. First time. He is the fastest of anybody yes, to two stones, so I suppose he can take that away from there. So quick on that second stone. Drives to the legs, straight out with the triceps, and manages to hold it just in front of his body. The ref was happy. But it does mean that if Phil Fister can lift three stones in any time, as long as he beats three before time runs out, he can come in and claim... Uh, Maximum points here, so a real chance for the fireman to do some lifting. That first stone, nicely balanced on that broad chest of the man from West Virginia. One down. He's taking his time. He's not trying to rush and go for... Uh, well, he's not going to get uh, Pudzianowski's time, so this is a calculated gamble here. He needs to make sure he gets at least three stones now because he's taking it really steady. Oh, he's only just got that one. Now, this is the moment, though, isn't it? He's obviously got a plan, and that plan is to get this stone lifted. He really is a marvel, Fister. First World's Strongest Man final back in Morocco, 98. Tall and skinny, had no shoulder power. Nowadays, monstrously strong overhead. Yes! That's the one. Well, the plan was absolutely spot on. 35 seconds to go! Well, why would you go for that fourth stone and waste some effort when you've got maximum points, unless you want to throw down a marker? I'm not even go. sure if he's going to... He is, you know. Oh, is this smart? With hands that have been torn up, why put in any extra effort and go for this fourth stone? I think this is a huge message. First-class post to Pudzianowski. I'm still in this contest. If he can do it... Well, he has made a statement. It's 20 years since an American has won this event. The last man to do it from the United States, Bill Kazmaier. And uh, Bill would have been looking on at this and been very impressed. That second stone wasn't the best, but he did just enough. And then the fourth stone, oh, that was easy. Phil, the look on your face when you were doing these stones was sheer determination. What was going on between your ears while you're performing these feats? You know, all of these events are so brutal. It's very tough to have a calm, peaceful, strong mind. I've done a lot of practicing with the rocks back home. So, uh, very confident going in, you know, very determined and confident. And didn't he look it? Phil Fister was the only man to lift all four stones, and he seems to be coming to life in the final. Pudzianowski did just enough to claim second, Bad news for England's Terry Holland. No stones lifted, no points, and possibly a serious injury. The rest of the field have a long way to go to catch the pole. It seems he's never out of the top two, so it will take something special to cut that lead. Terry Holland's hopes of a top five finish look in danger. He'll have his injury assessed overnight, and we'll hope that it's not too serious. Another bright day and fairly bright spirits amongst the athletes, despite an evening spent nursing battered bodies and lacerated hands. Next up, it's a familiar event in unfamiliar surroundings. It's Fingal's Fingers time for 10 of the world's strongest men. And the venue for this test of their strength and endurance, the splendidly named Fairyland. Come on, boys. Well, five fingers. And they're absolutely brutal. You've got to turn them through their axis in 75 seconds. The lightest of them is 440 pounds. They get heavier. The first heat, Rivis Vidzis of Latvia, who was struggling badly with his hands against uh, Jarek Dimmick, the pole. These two fellas down the field a little bit. They'll need to uh, fly through these fingers. They will both expect to get five. They'll both need five 
to get a decent score. Now the trick is here with the fingers, keep everything moving with your body, arms and legs in harmony. You can't just do it with leg strength and you certainly won't do it with your arms alone either. You've just got to keep going as well because once you've stopped, then suddenly you feel that weight and the moment it drops onto your shoulder blade, you can forget all about it. I can only imagine the pain that Ravis Vizis is going through here. His hands are taped up like boxers' fists, aren't they? To deal with the amount of skin he lost in that uh, Tower Stairs event. It must be incredibly sore. Yarek Dimmick, though, attacking this fifth one. And Dimmick has had a stomach bug. And maybe that's why he's not been able to get this fifth one. This is going to be a real battle now for Dimmick. Usually they get to that position and that's the end of it. Once that thing drops, it's so hard to carry it on. Dimmick has to give it up and I think uh, Vitsis might as well give it up. He's still giving it a go. Well, that is a phenomenal effort from the Latvian. That is very unusual. But how much has he paid? I think he's just delighted to have done it. And Dimmick, well, a fast time through four fingers. That will get him some points. But what about Vitsis taking that fifth? Business really doesn't understand the meaning of giving up. He's quite a bit smaller than most of the men here in the final. and He's overcome so many different difficulties to get here, not least his hands. Pujanovsky can fly through these fingers. So too can the man next to him. Don Pope, the construction worker from Cleveland, wearing his lucky sunglasses again. Take your positions. Well, they make absolutely mincemeat of that first finger, don't they? And it's Pope that's got the early jump. Now, can Don keep this going? He's got Puchanovsky on the run. You don't see this very often, and Puchanovsky is not flying. Pope is. Well, this was the one-week event for Pudzianowski last year in the World's Strongest Man final. Couldn't do all five then. And I know he's put in a huge amount of work at home. He's got himself a full set of them back in Poland. But uh, he's struggling with number four. And Pope is making short work for number five to take the lead. 34.17. Now, the good news for Pudzianowski is he's on that fifth finger, but it's starting to go just like his compatriot in the last heat. This is exactly where Dimmick fell, but like Vidzis, he gets it onto the shoulder and then still pushes it over. And has a reasonable time. He'll be disappointed because he always is if he's not in the lead. But that's not a bad time for five fingers, but it's nowhere near that time. Absolutely, it's flag-waving time for the Americans. Don Pope puts in a huge performance. He's with Kaz now. Dan, you really crushed the course. How much of a statement was that? Uh, you know, I just had some frustration built up in me from yesterday. Uh, you know, I wasn't expecting a third on the stones. I won that in my qualifier, so I was counting that as a win for me. So I gave up a couple points there. So hopefully I've made up a couple here. You know, it's, it's a long race. Six athletes left, and there are several that will hope to beat Pujanovsky's time. This final is opening up. Join us after the break for all the action. Welcome back to Sanya, where the shock news is that Maris Puchinovsky will not finish in the top two places. He's now behind his countryman, Sebastian Venter, who has just split five fingers in 39.13 seconds. The next question is, how much worse could it get for Puchinovsky? Tom Omit always enjoys the Fingles fingers. But Mark Felix doesn't. Mark's technique has been found wanting in this, and, and this is where his lack of experience sometimes really counts against him. Ready. You've got to really lock those elbows into place to work these fingers, and Mark, with that raw power, tries to keep his arms bent. Mitt is off and running as we expected, but let's keep an eye on Mark here. It, yeah, you can hear, keep those arms stiff. He's getting through and he's actually catching up with Tom Omit. Now then, this is a better effort from Felix. Oh, he's a super athlete, Mark Felix. But the bulk of Tom Omit will help him here against the really heavy fingers. He's got to keep those arms straight, only is bending them. There goes another one, but this is where that technique of Mark's 
tends to let him down. Mitt, as you can see, still ploughing away. Now, he doesn't want to be looking at what Mitt's doing. He just needs to concentrate on his own job. Good time from Tarmo Mitt, 46.15. But can Felix? No, he's in trouble. And once again, you have to look at this and say, it's technique that's let him down. Ten seconds left. He's giving it a real go, but I don't think, no, he's not going to make that. Good effort from Mark, but once he learns to lock those elbows, he's going to really improve at this. But Mitt will be happy to settle for third, and it's uh, another push down for Puchinovsky. Well, for the first 37 years of Mark Felix's life, he was interested in bodybuilding, and that's all about pressing it out with your arms. He needs to learn to cheat a little with these weights. Terry Holland says he's OK again. Just had a little attack of cramp earlier. We uh, were worried about that, uh, what looked like a muscle problem, but he's OK. And Phil Fister is definitely OK. Fister once set himself the target of winning this World's Strongest Man one day. Terry Holland's his target. Ready? But this year is a top five finish. The American fireman gets the early jump. But look, just look, I mean, he's only touched that about four times. I mean, Fister is making an absolute mockery of these fingers. Here's finger number four. And it's just as fast as the first one. He's so big, Phil Fister. Nearly six foot seven and 160 plus kilos. Can he beat 34.17 though? That's the question. And there's the answer. 31.92. Hollands has done a very good fingers himself. It's absolutely no disgrace to come second. And Fister is cheering him on. That's a terrific time for Terry Hollands. That really was impressive for the big man. Look at that. Fourth. No doubt Fister was cheering Terry Hollands on. He wants him to get in between Pudzianowski. 31.92, that's the fastest time ever in the Fingal's fingers at the world's strongest man. Phil Fister picks up a world record to go with his four stones in the overhead. Phil, that was an impressive performance. This event really suits you. Staying around the sun's awful tough, though. Really got to conserve your energy here. It's really great to be able to see Don do so well, all the other guys, and close the gap a little bit on Marius there. So. Hopefully it's going to be a good, good next event as well. Best of luck to you. Thanks, guys. There's a bit of an American charge on here as Fister continues his winning streak and Don Pope forces his way into third. The big shock, though, is that Pujanowski isn't even in the top five. When was the last time that happened? Just two and a half points separate Fister and Pujanowski at the top and there's no doubt that the American believes he can catch the reigning champion. Terry Holland seems to have got things back on track with that performance. His aim to finish in the top five looks possible. Now, if you thought waiting for a bus was hard enough, imagine having to pull one of these things in 100 degrees heat. Yep, you've guessed it. It's time for one of the all-time classic World's Strongest Man events. Kaz, it's getting exciting at the top of that leaderboard. Phil Fister, two wins on the bounce. He's the man in form, but he's a tall man. Is that going to be a problem for him on this event? Well, with a look of determination on his face when he completed all four of the stones and was the only one to do that, that was an incredible feat. And he flipped the five fingers. He was ferocious at the time. Now to go three in a row, I think he's ready. His height could be an advantage as long as he stays low and pulls hard and takes the pain. Well, top tips from Kaz there. If you're ever thinking of doing one of these yourselves, the athletes are ready. Time to see how they get on. So far, Martin, they're not getting on very well at all. Nobody's completed the course. They've all really struggled. Tarmo Mitt could only manage 11 metres. The very experienced Yarek Dimmick didn't fare much better, despite encouragement from Marius. He pulled for 11.25. Don Pope did a little better with a distance of 11.6. Leading the way at the moment is uh, Grenada's Mark Felix, 13.1 metres. So that's the standings at the moment. Seven gone, none have threatened the finish line. Just three left to try and pull this bus. Well, now it's Terry Holland's turn to give it a go, and it does seem that this bus that just uh, seemed to come from nowhere, really has upset these athletes. They weren't expecting this bus. This just turned up on the day. It's not the bus they trained on and practiced with. Are you 
and there are two very small inclines on this course and if you don't get speed on the pull those inclines will just destroy your challenge and that's what's happened to the seven other guys Terry Hollands has had the advantage of looking at what's happened but can he learn anything from what's happened well he's doing the right thing momentum vital working hands and feet everything's got to keep going the hands have got to keep pulling on the rope the feet have got to keep working and just get that bus going but that second incline starts to bite in around now and it's hurting Terry here he's got colossal bulk Terry that helps a great deal but now he's got to dig deep keep the legs pumping very small steps and I think it's ground to a halt in fact if you continue on here he's in danger of it rolling backwards so quite right he's called for the, the stop 14.8 meters Nick that takes the lead. Well, at the start of this, we'd have said 14.8. That'll be right down the bottom of the field, but we didn't know what this bus was going to do. With two to go, Terry Hollands takes the lead with 14.8. Can Marius Pudzianowski beat the bus? Nobody has yet. Strain. He's nodding to say yes, he's ready, and here he goes. And he's got some momentum. Tremendous arm strength he's got. There go those wheels, but it's that second incline. Watch out for that. That's where so many of these fellows have come adrift. He's got some speed, though. This looks promising. He got over the initial inertia very well there, that first incline. Now it's rolling well. He doesn't have the bulk of Hollands, but he's got extreme arm power. He's like a rugby prop forward, bent very low here. But here's that second incline again. Nobody's conquered it yet, and I don't think Pudzianowski's going to conquer it either. That's enough. It's enough for the lead, surely. Well, I thought for a moment we were going to get the first man to complete the course, but uh, I just don't think that's going to happen today. If this fella can't, there's only Fister to go. <laughs> Well, there's uh, one pole to another, offering encouragement, but it was never going to work for Pudzianowski. Once that bus ground to a halt, that was it. Uh, we heard Bill Kazmaier saying that uh, he thought that Phil Fister's height could give him a real significant edge in this competition. What did, uh, what did Kaz mean? Well, on that height is a huge amount of body weight. This is a man who's some 35 kilos heavier than Pudzianowski. And that really does help with the momentum, yes, when you're as ready. well as getting over the initial inertia here. Now, Fister, he's got the climbing boots on. He's going to get great traction off of the surface here. He's got to use those big arms of his and get this moving quickly. Well, he's done just that, and he's keeping looking down. He's not looking up at where he's going. He's just keeping looking focused on the floor. A little bit ragged with his legs, but he's still keeping it moving. The legs are actually all over the place. The technique is horrible, but the power is seeing him through, and he's still got that bus going. Can he complete the job? This is where they've all ground to a halt. He's very close to Pudzianowski right here, and he's still got 30 seconds to try and find something extra. He's not looked up once, and that's where he has to say enough is enough. I think he's got it, you know. I think he's done enough. This is going to be incredibly close. Fister, legs like jelly. We'll have to wait for the official measurement, but 16.9 it is, and that's good enough for the American. This is the bit that got him those few extra centimetres that he needed right there to just edge past Pudzianowski. Great effort from the fireman. Just 12 centimetres in it at the end then, but Phil Fister has recorded his third straight win and is in top, top form here in Sanya. Only the top three got anywhere close to finishing this course though, the bottom five didn't really get things going at all. Fister has cut the Champions League to just one and a half points and the top two are now moving away from the chasing pack. The race there is now for third place. Terry Hollands is moving closer to that top five finish. Now the only redeeming features as far as I can tell with this car is the outstanding headroom. There's nowhere to sit, there's no radio, 
The only way to make it move is to hang it off your shoulders and walk it 30 meters up this grass slope. Oh, and did I mention it weighs over 400 kilos? It's hardly ideal. And Martin was bragging last night that he was going to take that car for a walk himself. I guess he wimped out, and I don't blame him. That car weighs a lot, 926 pounds, and you've got to carry it 30 meters as fast as you can. Well, here's what's happened so far. It's a Polish one, two, three. Venta, Tojcik and Dimek with Rantvis Vidzis in fourth place. But up next, Don Pope, who will fancy himself in this event. It's all about getting some elevation and balance and momentum. That sounds simple, but if one of those three components isn't in place, you're not going to go far with this car. There's the elevation. Now he's got to keep it balanced and he's got to keep his legs moving as well. That looks pretty good. It's a good start. I think one of the lessons we learned in the heats is you've got to do a low pickup. You've got to get the car as high as possible. Last thing you want to do is drop it, have one of the tyres catch some of the grass and have to squat this thing again. 420 kilos, the heaviest ever super yoke we've had in the world's strongest man. This is a great effort from Don Pope. There's the stumble. 45 seconds to go. He's not going to take top spot. But it's a case of picking up points. Every second counts now for Don Pope. He's certainly got to finish the course, and I think he will. He's, his technique looks pretty good. He's close. There he goes. 47.99. He beat the course. And sometimes you think, you look at these athletes and you think, that's what's driving them. It's not about beating each other. They all respect each other so much. They just want to finish these events. Sheer determination at the end. And the tyres are locked, but Don managed to overcome the friction there. Drove it home. Good enough for third place there. Venter's time is still looking good, but Pope taking third. Will he still be third after uh, Maris Pudzianowski steps up? He always makes this event look so simple. Now, oh, will he get off to his usual flyer? No, he does. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? He's got that car rocking and rolling. Is that that extra weight that you were talking about, catching Kuchinovsky by surprise? Well, he settled it down now, but that wasn't a promising start. I doubt if he's going to beat Venter's time after that. Well, he's getting into his rhythm now. He's taking quite big steps for such a heavy weight, and he's attacking it up this hill. This is looking good from Pudzianowski now. Oh, it certainly is. He got it all together, and he didn't just beat Venter's time. He absolutely obliterated it. Oh, I didn't expect that after that start. I thought he was going to lose an awful lot there. But once he got it together, well, it all came together, didn't it? Slower than in qualifying, and this is why. That car was bouncing around on the grass there for a couple of seconds. But once he got it under control, he took it apart. And uh, Phil Fisto will have seen that. He's had a fantastic competition so far. Puchinovsky, though, knows that Fister looked horrible in the heats and hasn't exactly excelled in uh, training either. This doesn't look like one of the Americans' better events, but can a little bit of adrenaline help him here? Now, he's got a bit better balance this time. That car's looking nice and stable. He's got it very under control. This looks promising. Totally different than the heats. Fister, he could barely pick it up and walk with it. He's like a different man now. Three wins under his belt, and this could be number four. Look at the focus. He's got a shot at 27.4. He's going to beat it as well. That's a major shot. Yeah! He can't believe it. We can't believe it. I don't think he can believe it. Yes! Yes! Fist is on fire. Four wins out of four. And he's down chatting with Kaz. You looked in such great control the whole way. Was it as easy as it looked? It was a heck of a lot better than I did in the qualifying. It went a lot more today like I practiced it back home, you know? That's four firsts in a row. Yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Maybe we can make it five and get the overall. Poland may have three in the top five, but only one position counts. Four out of four for Fister, and who would bet against it being five? Terry Hollands will be massively disappointed with bottom spot after that mini revival. A top five finish for him now looks unlikely. 
Just half a point separates the top two with just one event left. If Fister finishes ahead of Pujanowski, he'll be the first American to win the title for 24 years. But from a British point of view, things look gloomy. This has built into one of the most exciting finals in many years. Just half a point separates Fister and Pujanowski, and just the Atlas stones remain. After winning four out of the last four heats, Phil Fister looks unbeatable. If he were facing anyone but Maris Pujanowski, he almost certainly would be. Can the American's amazing winning streak hold out, or can the mighty Marius show why he is considered by many to be the greatest strongman ever? They'll go head-to-head -head in the Atlas Stones, and as if this competition needed any more drama, cue the rain. Pujanowski leads Fister half a point behind. Don Pope must finish ahead of Mark Felix to claim third place. At the bottom, Terry Hollands needed something of a miracle to claim that top five finish. Sadly for him, four stones wasn't enough. You've seen it all before. Five huge stones have to be lifted onto five platforms. There's just 75 seconds to do it in, and the rain is going to make things very interesting. After all the events, it comes down to this. Just half a point separating the two men at the top of the table. And if that wasn't exciting enough, the weather is intervening to provide its own drama. Bill, how is this weather going to affect this? Well, they're not going to be able to use glue or chalk. It's not going to help. It's going to come down to hand strength, forearm strength, and who's got the guts to pick up these stones and put them on the barrels. Who do you think it's going to help, the smaller man, Marius, or the big Phil Fister? Fister's got a man's hand. He can handle these stones. I'm voting for him. Well, we shall wait and see. Just that half point. If Marius wins, fourth title. If Fister wins, title back to America. It couldn't get any more exciting. Well, the big two wait. Keep facing forward, boys. First up, Don Pope and Mark Felix. What a wonderful competition Mark Felix has had. Fourth place with one event to go. Don Pope, who started off so badly, last place after one event. He has just flown through and looks good for a third place finish. Very impressive stuff from the man from Cleveland. The winner of this guaranteed third place. So Pope will want to make sure that Felix doesn't uh, knock him off the uh, podium, as it were. And it's such, a, it's such a wonderful way to finish Strongman the Stones. This really sorts out the men from the boys, doesn't it? Felix is struggling. I think a word about the conditions here, because it's been a torrential storm leading into this, and the normal tacky glue they wear on their arms will not work. But Felix has had a terrific comeback here, but that fifth stone, well, that's the tough one. This is all about technique now, and that grip on a wet stone, well, that's very tough as well. You see him get to this fifth stone, and so often you've seen men have to give it up right here, and Pope showing all his experience and just basically retuning here. I think some of these fans think that uh, these two fellows have given it up. They haven't. They're just getting it all together again for one last assault. Time is running out. 10 seconds. Can either of these two fellas get that fifth one? That Pope's big push seals third place for the American. Felix settles for four stones. Well, not a bad third place finish at all for Don Pope, considering how he started. And it all finished really like this one last big effort. And there it was. And so it comes down to this, Fister and Puchanovsky. Puchanovsky, shorter and squatter. Does that give him an edge? Fister goes for the uh, shirt off technique. Take your positions. Both these men very good at this, but. Uh, if there's one man you'd have to say is the absolute governor at this, it's Pudzianowski. And you see they have to tiptoe over on that slick surface there. Fister's working with him, though. So dynamic, Pudzianowski. These lighter stones, he's gone ahead. 
nothing between them here. Look at this. They're both to the fifth stone. That time is going to go, surely. Fister's got in front, and he's edged it. The American long wait is over. It's been more than two decades. His reign comes to an end. His has just begun. Phil Fister is the world's strongest man with this wonderful finish. What a moment for the United States. I'm just tickled, man. It hasn't, none of this has sunk in yet. What and, were the uh, emotions just like after you knew that your stone went in the hole and Mario's stone was still rolling on the rim? I'm just numb and beyond numbness. It's just a great sense of uh, relief. What do you want to say to the people back home and around the world now that you are the world's strongest man? I did it my way and no one can stop you if you want to do it your way. Fister's victory makes it five wins out of five and confirms his absolute dominance of this field. Don Pope will never have been happier to come in fourth. Confirmation at the bottom, Terry Holland's four stones in 25 seconds was only enough for seventh place. It couldn't have been closer then. The last event, the last stone, Pujanowski will be back hungrier than ever next year. And Don Pope underlines a tremendous fight back. He takes third place. But there's no doubt who this year's competition belongs to. Phil Fister is the world's strongest man. Well, Phil, everyone's clamoring to come and have a word with you. A very, very popular win. And although the rain's still falling, I reckon it would take a monsoon to wipe that smile off your face. <laughs> How are you feeling? Just a big relief, you know. Been uh, eight years in the making and a lot of frustration. And um, I'm just very humbled, you know, to be so blessed by God and, and all the support of my family and friends and community and sponsors. And uh, I'm numb. Well, many, many congratulations. Thanks for speaking Thanks, to Martin. us. Enjoy the next 12 months. You thoroughly deserve it. Well done. Thanks. Well, that's it. No fourth title yet for Poland and the trophy going back to America for the first time in 24 years. It's been a remarkable tournament. If next year is half as exciting as this year's, we're in for a treat. Join us next year, World's Strongest Man.